Hello and welcome to the Ozone. I'm your host, Jeff Hazard, retired sports information director of SUNY Oneonta and the current chair of the Athletic Hall of Fame Committee. And on today's show, we welcome in Sue Bailey, class of 1989, a four-year outstanding basketball player for us. And we will enshrine her into our Athletic <laughs> Hall of Fame this coming June 8th, 2024. Uh, welcome to the show, Sue. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Happy St. Patrick's Day. That's right. St. Patrick's <laughs> Day. We're getting closer to June 8th. It's only a few months right. away. Uh, How does that feel? Oh, it feels amazing. I have to be honest. I It was unexpected, you know, um, but a very, very pleasant surprise. And I was, when I found out, I was very humbled by it. Um, mm. Just to be in the conversation was an honor, you know, um, and now to be in the Hall of Fame with all these incredible athletes from Oneonta, it's really it's really a thrill. So yeah. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you to the committee. Well, we uh, congratulations on behalf of the committee. I mean, certainly it is well deserved. And, you know, during that time, you know, the 80s, we did have quite a few good teams and quite a, um, you know, many outstanding athletes, uh, as, as I found out, because I was not there during that time. But you, your name is there and, and we're going to put <laughs> you on the wall and it'll be there forever. On the wall. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, thank you. So uh, what brought you to, you know, like, how did you find your way to Oneonta? Why did you choose Oneonta? Oh, you know, Oneonta was the last school that I visited. And I had I'd visited several with my parents, um, one in Pennsylvania, several in New York, and met some great people, good coaches, you know, really had some wonderful experiences, but wasn't sure you know, wasn't exactly sure. And then I went to Oneonta, you wow. know, and when I got there, I just, I literally within 10 minutes was like, yeah, this feels right, you know, and I felt comfortable. It felt like a fit for me. And I remember, I remember driving home with my parents saying, yeah, I think I want to go there. That's the place. So mm -hmm. that was it. So nothing really exciting or anything. I just, yeah. it just felt right. Yeah. You know, in my, the, the 23, plus years that I was at Oneonta and, and talking to, you know, former athletes like yourself and, and learning a little bit more about them. I think that every one of them has said that that's why they chose Oneonta because it yeah. just felt right. Felt it like does. it exactly felt like another home. So Which yeah, it, I just, mean, knew, I just knew it. Yeah. Um, Cause you played for uh, Barb Blodgett. I played, I played for Barb. I actually, thought coming in ironically enough that I was going to play for Mac Culpepper I don't know if yeah. you know that name yes I do yeah Mac but I, I coach Blodgett was on medical leave at the time I believe yeah. and so I had spoken to coach uh, Culpepper and thought that I was probably going to be playing for him yeah. and then when it was coach Blodgett I was fine I met her she was great so uh -huh. I was like I, I I was in with Oneonta at that point anyway so yeah I was happy to have coach Blodgett yes yeah, so I played for coach for four years yeah um so uh, all conference player twice uh you graduated as the all-time leading scorer I mean did that was that a surprise to you uh, that's a funny story I really found out about it a couple of games before I think I uh, coach said you know, see, you're close, you're close to all time land. So I'm like, what, you know? Yeah. So, uh, that was, that was exciting to be honest. I, uh, I had a lot of people there. Some friends came up, my parents surprised me because I only needed, I think I needed seven or eight points that game. Yeah. So I remember my parents got there. They're like, we just were nervous. You weren't going to get the seven, eight points, yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, but then they stopped the game. They made a big fuss. It was very, very sweet. And I was very appreciative. Uh, no, and I held it for probably about what two and a half years. No, I'm just uh, no, actually, quite a few years. I think. Oh, it, really? I think that it took. I don't even know. Well, almost a a decade because. Oh, really? Yeah, the two the the two players who are the all time leading scorers they were in the same class, and they were part of our um our NCA team that went and you know. Uh, yeah, to, did really 19, well. Yeah, in the late yeah before I got there, 1998. Okay. And, uh, but it took until then until they somebody actually reached a thousand points wow so your record stood for a while oh that's that's pretty cool <laughs> thank you for that yeah it was fun um so now you only got to play a couple of years with the three-pointer right yeah when i started i think that was actually the first year yeah. okay 
I want to say, was it 86? I think it was 86 or 87. Should probably know that. So it might've been, it might've been a year or two with it, a year or two without it. Yeah. But um, how did that, how do you think that changed the way the game was played? Um, I think it added to the game. Yeah. I think it was, you know, especially if you're a good shooter, right. which uh, I didn't have too many out there, but we had a couple of girls on our team who could shoot that three. Yeah. So I think it, it, it was good for the in and out part of the game. And right. certainly with uh, assists and assist in, you know, to the fours and the fives, it, I think it made it more of a well-rounded game. So right. I loved it. And right. I also loved when they shrunk the basketball for girls. Yes. <laughs> Whenever that happened. Yeah, I th well, it wasn't deal. too much after that because I actually coached women's basketball for a while and yeah. it was amazing. Like that was really a, a great change for them. It really was. Um, and obviously what it's done for the game, you watch it now on television and, the, you know, it's pretty unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable time for girls basketball. Yeah. Yes. Um, did you think that you were part of any kind of revolution in women's athletics or, or basketball? No, no, not <laughs> No? no, not at all. No. Um, how much fun was it to play? I mean, you know, uh, you know, talk a little bit about your teams and your teammates. Oh, I had a, I had a, a wonderful experience, really. I came in as a freshman and uh, didn't play as much. You know, I had to work to get some playing time that first yeah. year. Uh, but I had, I remember specifically my first year as a freshman meeting um, uh, Lori O'Neill, Katie Keck, Jackie Meadow, those were the three girls that were um, my, you know, my leaders, the role yeah. models. They just brought it every day. I mean, they had the energy, they had the passion, you know, they had the knowledge of the game. So they were like vocal leaders and also role models. You know, they, they yeah. showed by example. Yeah. And I remember, you know, being at practice and just, just them, you know, rooting everybody on and I just got more into it more and more and the more, and I love the game of basketball, but the more uh, that you heard and the more you, you like worked as a team, the more I wanted to play. I was like, I got to get out here. I want to play more. Yeah. So it drove, you know, it drove me to try to just work a little harder and try to get in as much as I possibly could and, and take advantage of the time when I was in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were terrific. And then, you know, through the years, I just played with some amazing girls. I was lucky enough to play with, um, Liz Hutchinson for four years, yeah, okay. Jody Reisdorf, a good friend of mine, yeah. um, uh, Trisha O'Sullivan, Dina St. Clair. I think she was, uh, she was Dina, in the whole yeah. thing last year. Yeah. I played with Dina for three years. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then my senior year, uh, Stacy White, Deb Lynch, I, you know, I, I'm going to forget someone, but they were all, they all had an impact on my life really. And, you know, made me a better player and certainly I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. So Right. I'm very appreciative to, to, to my teammates throughout the four years. Yeah. Um, it's funny that those names, you know, when you mention them or whatever, I mean, in, through the years of doing some research and putting together records for women's basketball, those names are all, Oh, they're all over they the just place. Stand out. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so and I'm so fortunate that I'm friendly, like Lori O'Neill to this day is my bestie, you know? So I'm just wow. so fortunate that I still have a relationship with them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's an important part of like your overall, I guess, experience at Oneonta. I mean, that seems to be, was it all about the team? Was, you know, talk a little bit about that. Um, so I think my whole experience at Oneonta, I just, I felt very blessed because being a student athlete was important to me, Yeah. you know? So I, I took, um, I took my academics seriously and I took, I mean, I had fun. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to do well in both. You yeah. know, I wanted to do well in both. So it was important to me uh, to try to focus when I had to do the academics and focus when I was playing sports. But to be honest with you, Oneonta was a wonderful four years of my life, but playing basketball made it that much better. I mean, it just, it just, for me, it just brought it to a whole nother level, right. you know? So, and I was able to have experiences outside of basketball as well. I had a wonderful group of friends that I lived with, a core group of friends who ended up getting involved, by the way, with the basketball team. I think one, did, one ended up being the scorekeeper. One wow. did, one, two of them ended up taking videos. One did the clock. I mean, wow. so they were all really, really supportive of the team as well. But uh, yeah, so I think just being on a sport made it so much more special for me. It was also an outlet 
you know, you're playing ball, you're playing ball, you're not doing, you know, you're not, you don't worry about studying now, we're yeah, going to play yeah. basketball, and we're going to have some fun, and just the, the laughs, and the, and the camaraderie, and the, the bonding that I had with my team, it's just a, a lifetime of memories, so. Yeah, now, uh, during that time, I would have to assume, because there were a lot of two and three sport athletes. Yes. On the women's side. Yeah. Um, you know, what was that? What was that like to, you know, like you said, we talked about Dina St. Clair, who was a three sport athlete. She was like a three. Yeah. She played yeah. everything. She did everything. Yeah. And um, so did you all kind of hang out and, and go support each other when during the different seasons? Yeah. Yeah, we did. I mean, I had a couple of my friends played on the softball team, uh, soccer, my roommate played on the soccer team. So yeah, it was, um, that's what was great about Oneonta is it had a really strong academic and athletic program. Right. So it was a pleasure. We also, I was also lucky enough to be friendly with some of the guys, the soccer team, the men yeah. on the soccer team and the men on the basketball team. Yeah. So we would, one of my, uh, one of my favorite um, times I would say, as far as games go, were those back to backs. Yeah. I don't know if they still do that. Yes, they do. They still have. I love those. Those were great because they, you know, you'd have a game on Friday night and then you'd have a game on Saturday night and the men would follow us. Yeah. So we would play and uh, it was wonderful. People would come out and then the girls would go back and get ready and come out for the men's game. And yeah. uh, it was just, uh, it was really special. And what was also special about that is, is my parents um, would always come up those weekends because they had friends who lived in a log cabin in Walton, which wasn't oh, okay. far from Oneonta. Yeah. So they would go to the log cabin, come to both games. So th those weekends were, were extra special for me. And uh, yeah, so it was just a lot of memories yeah. flooding back now. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and again, that's what most of the, you know, when you get a chance to reflect back on it, you know, it's, it's. Always, yeah, I haven't thought, I really haven't thought about a lot of it until this, yeah. you know, uh, the last several weeks. And it's like, it's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. What was the campus like? Because of course it's changed a lot since you were there. It has changed. I'm looking forward to it. I have not been back since 1992. Wow. I think that's the last time I went back for a couple of, alumni games yeah I'm back for a couple alumni games and I think the last one I actually lived in Virginia at the time and I came from Virginia for the alumni game and I think that was 92 wow. but anyway the campus was great I mean again the feel that I got right away it was probably obviously more intimate than it that right. it is now now right. it's probably I can't wait to see it but I know it's much bigger and more sparkly and flashy and yeah <laughs> uh but uh when when we played it was probably more homey and you know yeah. the gym was you know not this huge gym it was uh you know but it was it was home to us and it was the campus was great library was great that I lived on campus for three years wow. I really loved being on campus you know so uh except for that cow path walk oh up the anyway, I remember walking up the cow path <laughs> that was, but uh yeah. yeah it was still there to me, the campus was a community. It really was. You know, you'd walk around and you'd see people um, in that area right around the gym. It wasn't a courtyard, but it was similar. Yeah. And it was kind of like a meeting. Oh, they called it the wall. It just came to me. Oh, yeah. They, they called it the wall in the old days. I'm sure that wall is gone right now, but they called it the wall. That was like the cool place to hang out. Okay. Was was that out, outside Chase Gymnasium? Or was that down this? Down it this was gym? right. I think it was like. My friends would kill me right now if I didn't know. It was kind of by the gym and the library. I want to say it was like a triangle. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yep. Um, That's cool. I'm trying to think if that was still there because they turned it into, um, you know, they turned it in, they called it the president's garden now. They, oh, they, okay. They, you know, it's all nice brick and, you know, some nice. Oh, um, nice. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, when you, again, when you walk around the campus, you're going to be like, wow, this, and then you'll say, oh, that used to be this. And that, used yeah, to I'm be looking forward to it. I am. So, but no, it really, uh, beautiful campus. Um, you know, we had a facilities person that just took so much pride and. That's you know, important. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. And they, and it's a popular school too. Yeah. So yes, more and more is. people go there, the more and more you can build. Now they have the whole field, you know, right. You the have field the whole athletic yeah. And there. we have the, yeah, we built, um, we redid our softball and baseball, uh, fields. They're now turf. Oh, great. Yeah. So now we have all turf fields, so we never have to worry about, I guess you'd say weather, but. Um, that so weather. 
Yeah. I know. That weather. I remember I was, I did love this too. I played on a co-ed softball team at uh-huh. Oneonta. And I remember specifically that we had a game on May 3rd and it snowed. Oh, geez. <laughs> I was like, where are we? Yeah. You're, yeah. yeah that's so, a lot. But it was fun. It yeah. was fun. So uh, did you um, participate in any other campus activities while you were, or was it just all basketball? and? It was pretty much basketball and just whatever sport I could get my hand on. I, I, I played a lot of racquetball. Oh, uh, I remember okay. there was racquetball courts in the gym too. There's like, like yep. probably three of them, but they were like a hidden tre- treasure. Nobody really knew they were there. No. So I remember a couple of friends of mine, we found them, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, again, I just, uh, I had such a great time with my friends and uh, the basketball and, you know, going to other sporting events. It was, yeah, it was a great time. Very, very fulfilling. Yeah. So um, you took your Oneana education and then you spent your entire professional career in education, uh, yes. which, you know, maybe talk about that and how you think Oneana really built the foundation for you to do what you did. Oh, company. well, yeah, it, it certainly did. I, I started, I graduated with a business economics degree and a business communications minor. And then I kind of switched gears, you know, I switched gears mm-hmm. into education with wonderful experiences in my early twenties and the jobs that I did have, I'm very fortunate to have them, but I ended up switching gears into education, went back to school for uh, school counseling. And that's how I ended up in education. I was a school counselor, assistant principal, and then a principal. And from Oneonta, what I learned, I mean, again, back to being back to being uh, on a team. I think that's a huge part of it. I think it's all those experience kind of goes in a blender and then they kind of form who we are, you know, and being on a team. I mean, I think about, yeah, some of those things that you learn, prioritizing your time, you know, managing your time. What kind of work ethic are you building and developing? I think that's a big part of it. You know, like I always did expect a lot, you know, from myself and uh, the work ethic developed and, and, you know, and I wanted it to, I wanted to, you know, I wanted it to be stronger Uh, focus. I wanted to, to be that person that would focus on whatever it is I'm doing. I'm not great at that all the time, but I, I want to say that I want to be great at that is (laughs) when you're in something do it be in the present focus on right. what you're doing and then when you're in the next thing just like if i'm studying i'm studying if i'm in, in basketball practice i'm in basketball practice so i think that was an important thing developing your work ethic and and then i think you know when i think about being you know in education and being a leader in education i think about the leaders that i had that i mentioned before and Oneonta. and then when i was captain and a leader i'd like to think that i paid it forward a little bit to the girls. I certainly was not the percentage of what the girls were for me, but they, um, you know, I think that was, I think that was important to be, to be learn about being a leader, learn about being a good teammate. What kind of teammate do I want to be, you know? And then the biggest thing for all student athletes, I think is representing the school. You know, you're representing Oneonta, you're representing a team, you're representing yourself and, I think I did that, you know, I tried to do that with the school that I worked in for 25 years, you know, you're a representative of school, that's an honor, it's a privilege. Uh, So all of those experiences that I had, even switching, um, you know, switching into into education was, you know, really formed who I am and and where I am now. So I'm very, very appreciative. Did you ever, you know, because you said you were in business economics, like, did you ever think you were going to be in education? You, you didn't go to, no. to be a teacher. If, Jeff, if somebody, when I was bouncing a basketball in Oneonta, if anybody would have told me I would have been a middle school principal for 15 years, I would have said, you're out of your mind. Yeah. You know, we're, you're crazy. I just didn't even, I didn't even think about it. Uh, but along the way, I'll tell you a couple of the courses that I had in my business communication minor some of those courses stuck with me, the psych- uh, industrial psychology communication courses, those stuck with me. And I remember when I was working in the business um, field in my early 20s, I remember kind of, you know, leaning towards human resources and psychology. And I kept going back to it. And that's when I decided to shift over to counseling. And then I did a, a, sh- a brief internship in a school and I was like, all right, done, because 
I was in a school and the, the guidance counselor that I was with was a coach. I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is where I need to be. Right. Did you get an opportunity to coach at all? I did. I was terrible. <laughs> I was terrible. I was not, coaching was not my, I loved it because I loved being with the girls. Right. Uh, they were great. And talk about, and I was, I was a guidance counselor at the time. So I had my girls on my team in my office all the time. And it was yeah, so yeah. much fun. But on, on the court, I don't know how these varsity coaches and these college coaches do it. I, I was consumed with ninth grade girls basketball. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how these varsity coaches do it. I'm just wow. so impressed. I, I was just, um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my own head. I was very intense. Uh, and then I would like, after the game, I would laugh at myself. Like, why did you get so intense? You know, so, but I had a great time with the kids and yeah. I did it for probably three or four years. Okay. <laughs> and then, then that was it. <laughs> yeah, that's, wow. That's crazy. That's but I, I, I loved it. <laughs> um, any, uh, any highlights uh, from your experiences at Oneonta, maybe a game or something or. Yeah, you brought the one up before, but I, I think I think a couple of things come to mind. Um, one game <laughs> we lost, but we the away games were always so special because you get to bond with your teammates, you have fun, you're silly, you know. The, the away, I mean, the away, the away games, just right. jumping on the Oneonta bus. Do they still have the big red dragon bus and everything? Uh, no, we do not. No. Oh, you don't? Oh, mm -hmm. there, there used to be a big Oneonta bus with the red dragons on it. It was great. Wow, I never and, heard uh, of that. This, so I've been there. I've twenty. Never heard of the no heard about, dragon bus. I gotta get a picture for you. You should. I did. I need to see it. I did, never knew it. What? Even Don Fuelling never talked about the big red dragon bus. Really? Yes. I gotta get a picture so everybody believes me. Yeah. It was great, but anyway, um, and I think we might have taken vans. Sometimes on an overnight we would take vans, but most most games we took the big bus, and. I remember coming down to Stony Brook my sophomore year and I, I bring up that game only because, you know, I live, I, I, I grew up about 20 minutes from Stony Brook. So it was so special for me because I was a sophomore. So I was, you know, I was playing more, but uh, I had my whole team there. And then my parents had the whole team over to the house after the game. So yeah. here we are going from Stony Brook after the game, you know, showering, going down to my parents and having a party. I remembered my whole team was in my house and, dancing and we and my parents you know my mom made a bunch of food and we just had a ball and it was just special for me to have you know my worlds colliding yeah. at that point um mm -hmm. other games i i was my senior year we made the playoffs and mm -hmm. that was the first time we had made the playoffs yeah. so that was and i was happy for coach blodgett because i think she you know she was excited for that and and proud of that and i was happy for her and we lost but it was a great it was a great experience just to be there, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, but the, all the games, I mean, I have so many memories and the other thing that I love, which my teammates probably would freak out if they heard me say this, but I love the double sessions. Oh, yeah. it, we used to come back like in um, a week earlier than the rest yeah. of the athletes, um, yeah. or uh, sorry, the rest of the students yeah. after Christmas break. And that week you just like focused on basketball. You didn't have work to worry about. So you focused on basketball and we were there, you know, at, all the girls lived in the same home, you know, two homes or whatever. Yeah. And it was work in the morning, you know, you bust your butt at practice, be exhausted during the day, eat, go back to practice. And uh, it was just a really, a really fun time with the team and a real bonding time. And we also, you know, shared the campus and the, and the town with the, with the men's basketball team. So that was fun too. Oh, so we right. got to spend yeah. some time with them. Yeah. So it was really, it was a good time. Yeah. Um, anyone you'd uh, like to uh, thank for your, you know, that you think contributed to your experience and. Yeah. I mean, honestly, all, all the, all the teammates that I had mentioned before, they all had an impact on me. I have such fond memories of them. Uh, Coach Blagett, of course, you know, she, uh, she was so dedicated and you could tell, love the game of basketball, uh, coach. Well, we had three other coaches that also, uh, I learned quite a bit from just about, especially just about the game and different was coach Finn. I don't know if you know this name. He was, he was only here for a short time. I'm going to say a season coach. Hey, Karen. Hey, yeah. uh, she was cool. 
phenomenal. Yeah, she went on to a lot of uh, collegiate coaching. Uh, yes, as well. she was she had it, you could just tell she had it. I was yep. I was, you know, zoned in when she was talking, you yep. know, and and Jackie Meadow, who was also a friend of mine, still uh, still keep in touch with her, you know, she was super into it and a great coach. So I had uh, yeah, I had some phenomenal coaches. Uh, and I, and I have to, I have to thank my parents, you know, because my parents are gone, you know, both of them are gone, unfortunately. And, um, I just, they've been such always were such a huge part of my athletic career Mm. and, you know, there's a huge part of all of these memories and, uh, they'd get a kick out of this. They would get it. They would, this would mean a lot to them. This would mean a lot to them. So oh, they they will they will be there, I'm sure. Thank you. Be there. Thank you. Um, well, listen, on behalf of the Hall of Fame committee, again, you know, just congratulations. And Thank we, you. We look forward to celebrating you and our other Thank inductees you. on June 8th. Um, you know, so we're just looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun day. Thank you, Jeff. I also want to thank you because you're such an ambassador for Oneonta Sports and for this Hall of Fame process and uh you just made it that much more special so thank you well it'll be uh again i can't wait to meet you again the the ones that i don't get to you know see or i didn't see you know what i mean it, it's just great to meet them and finally just say hello and yeah first. looking forward to it looking yeah. forward to it thanks so we'll see you uh on june 8th then okay we'll see okay. you then all right thank all you right, take care bye thank you